Today on Success is the New Black, not only we have something to help your business knowledge, but we have ladies that are going to tantalize your taste buds also. We have Dessert Divas themselves, the co-owners of Southern Girl Desserts, coming up next. That's right, we're going to work it out. It's yet another edition of Success is the New Black, and I am your host, Tara Johnson. Today, I'm kicking it solo, because Ashita couldn't be here, but we're down one host, but we're up two guests, and I am utterly excited to have these ladies with, with us today. Your Cupcake Wars winners, <laughs> your former sugar addicts, <laughs> your former sugar addicts, we have the co-owners, right? We have the co-owners of Southern Girls Desserts. That's right. We have Katara here with us today, Katara Coleman, and Shoniji. I got it, girl. You did. <laughs> Robinson you did with us here today. Hello. How are Hello. you? How are you? Hello. I am so good. No, seriously, I'm really excited to have you guys here. And we're excited to be here. Thank, <laughs> thank you so much for oh, having us. Oh, thank you so much. Like, <laughs> When I, I'm a Southern girl. Yes. I tell, talk about it all the time, being from Georgia. And what I found when I came to L.A. was, I was like, what a food. People don't eat here. Exactly. Right? Exactly. On the head. And I was like, wait a minute. I can't I can't go down the street and get no red velvet, no girl, pecan, no sweet potato, about it. no nothing. Preach. So as I understand it, that's the inspiration of where Southern Girls Desserts came from. Absolutely. And so you helped all of us Southerners here. And you've been helping everybody else in L.A. So (laughs) tell us how the whole thing went down and where the idea came from. So it was super selfish. It was the same thing you were talking about. You know, you're sitting, I'm sitting in Inglewood and craving my grandmother's red velvet cake. And they live in Florida. So I had no family in L.A. and no one who I knew I could go to for that fix. Mm Mm-hmm. And so I started calling home and like, what's up? Can I get that recipe? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, if anyone has a grandmother, especially a Southern one, they don't put anything down. So everything is kind of like, well, a little bit of this, a little pinch of that. And, you know, that's where Southern Girl was born. It was born from a need of wanting to have that homemade baked dessert that you could not get in L.A. I know everyone tried and people were recommending places, mm, but it just wasn't, it wasn't what working. we were used to. <laughs> yeah. You know, you have everybody wants their grandmother stuff. And that's how Southern Girl was born. And when you guys get start, like got started, and I did you start together or very close? It okay, was, I was like we're twins, so you know I came out a couple first, minutes, and a then couple a couple minutes, minutes she was born. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the older twin. <laughs> Literally, left like six months. You okay. know, I, I started a business in July of 2007, and toward the end of that year, Shaniji came came on board. Now, how was it for you, Katara, to like start this business? Because you know, I will be honest. Mm-hmm. We as business owners can hoard some stuff. Like we don't always like to share. <laughs> I'm oh, the that's a, she's the okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, it's funny because uh, a sorority sister of ours, who we both um, n- know s- separately, kind of in you know introduce us. And so Shaniji, as I started Southern Girl, Shaniji, that I didn't know at the time, was starting her own bakery, and she was getting flyers ready and trying to get her her bakery started. And the friend was like, "Listen, y'all might want to come together and do this together because we have the same friend group, same right, group of people, right. <laughs> and it was the same you know thought process behind what the you know we were trying to do, Southern yeah. desserts. So I invited her over to my apartment." And Shaniji came in, and we talked for a little while. I don't remember the specifics of the conversation, but I asked her <laughs> if she wanted to be a bit my business partner. Wow. And Within, uh, like, 30 it minutes. It wasn't even, like, a whole <laughs> like, 30 minutes. That's like, just girl, me. You want a partner? Okay, girl, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But she's like, but um, I don't know how this is going to work out, so um, I, I can't share any, any recipes. recipes. I'm like, well, I want to share any of my oh, <laughs> But oh, I was really? ready to go, No, honey. no, no, no. no. Really? No, no, that's the one. Have okay. you guys shared recipes? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> it didn't last very long no. because okay. the business actually started in our in our in home. Homes. Okay. Yeah. And so she lived in Inglewood. Right. I lived in North Hollywood. Okay. And we were running this business, but it was basically two different businesses. And if anybody knows in LA, those that's not an easy drive. No, I mean, to try. <laughs> it could be. 
a 15 mile difference, but that could be a two hour drive. Yeah. 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 Seriously. Yeah. Seriously. So we, um, we were, like I said, we were basically running two different businesses mm -hmm. with the same recipes. But even then, in the very beginning, because we both have that similar background, we still weren't even really writing anything down. No. It was me that came and said, Katara, <laughs> we <laughs> have got to down. get some consistency I, here. Even to this day, sometimes I'll be like... And uh, I'm like, oh, stop it! <laughs> oh, she's like, you know we do things with we, recipes now. We have now. recipes now. I was like, well, <laughs> I put a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You can't run no business It'll still like be that. good because you know it's out of love. <laughs> How did you guys decide? <clears throat> two red velvet cake recipes. Well, we, two we, I potato. had a red velvet recipe and she had a red velvet right, so recipe. So how did you decide and which when, recipe? We, just kind we of, put them together. We put them together okay. and we decided which one we thought worked best. Yeah. And that's what we went with. So and you two could actually say, all right, girl, your red velvet might be just a smidge better than mine. <laughs> no, you, I, we took elements of we both, took elements yeah. of both okay. the parts that were good because they were both good, mm -hmm. but neither one of them separately was great. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, and that's the thing. We were able to kind of recognize that and we were like, mm -hmm. okay, let's. And, and that's what you need. You need people who are not going to be so like, <sighs> I can't believe that right. you insult, you know. And she was open, I was open to just, we were about Southern Girl at that. It wasn't Shaniji and Katara anymore. It was about Southern Girl. I, I mean, you really hear that rarely. Because <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like, people are like, I started my business, my business is the best, blah, yeah. blah, blah. So, I, kudos to you two to be able to come together and like you said, put Southern Girl desserts first mm -hmm. in order to make the best business possible. Yeah. yeah, that was the most important thing. I think it's amazing that the story, because I you know, normally hear about people starting businesses in their mm -hmm. garage together and you know, that kind of thing. So if you guys be put together, yeah. what, big ups to the friend who puts you two together. <laughs> big ups to her. Nikaya. Do you, you guys give Nikaya like unlimited cupcakes? And she, she gets what she needs. Whatever she yeah. needs. <laughs> It sounds like yeah. it. Yeah. So when you guys got started, you were working literally two businesses out of your home. Yes. And so how was it when you got started? Like, capital is such a thing that stops mm -hmm. so many businesses. Oh my did goodness. you guys do savings, loans? <laughs> like, what did you do to get started? All of that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I um, worked for a, a company. And so I had a 401k and um, savings. I was a very frugal person. So I was like, okay, I'm going to get this little 401k out of here and get some money that we need. And then we were calling our parents and calling on them for assistance and whoever would. I mean, we had friends um, who were wanted to invest in us. Mm -hmm. And we both had jobs too yeah. at that time. Okay. So um, pretty much all of our money went into the business. Obviously, we weren't making any money. <laughs> we weren't making any money. Um, it's all about the love. Yeah, so. That takes you far, though. It, it has brought us very far. Yeah. 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 To have a company created on love, especially when you have something that's desserts. Yeah. I mean, I think people feel the difference. I mean, look at the patty pies a couple of years ago. Yeah. You know, patty was all about the love. Patty, patty. Right. <laughs> that stuff takes you far. How long was it before you really, you guys started to like turn a profit? Some years. Yeah. You know, and people tell you it takes five years mm -hmm. to just to see if you can get past that five year hump to start the, the business going in the right direction. And we're going into our 10th year. That's amazing. This year would be 10 years. And sometimes I know we look back and we're like, how did we make it through that? Because it, capital is not, it, no, it's not easy, easy to come by. It's not easy. And I, I also think there's a, a huge difference between having a Home a home-based business oh, yeah. in this industry mm -hmm. that we're in um, versus when you have brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. Like, we always say that our business really started mm -hmm. once we opened up our store location. Oh, absolutely. Um, we, you know, we look back on it and every step of that journey has aided to get us where we are now. Um, but... It's like night and day. So did you feel like you almost started business completely we started over? over. Completely with the over. Yeah, we had completely employees. Over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we had all of these uh, business things that came. You had to have taxes. And I mean, you, those were all on a small scale yeah. at first. Mm -hmm. But now we have employees, which is a whole nother a whole nother part of this business thing and then we're our rent and everything that came with that and just having marketing and uh, it was it was a lot I think that we, the, the the portion at home was really helpful mm -hmm. in 
uh, helping us to perfect recipes, mm -hmm. helping us to get um, in the in the swing of the process mm -hmm. of getting things done. Um, and I think had we not had that experience opening up the brick and mortar, we would have really just failed miserably. Yeah. Yeah. Because having to do that level of production on a regular basis, you know, we had that background, mm -hmm. you know, just obviously on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. So you just take that small scale and make it grander, right. you know, for the, for the need. So For our entrepreneurs out there in the food industry, mm -hmm. or even kind of any kind of product <clears throat> that you're doing, mm -hmm. when do you suggest that you really consider brick and mortar? Because you've seen people who are like, I haven't sold anything, but I'm about to get this twenty thousand square foot. But you know what I mean. Try to get you know what it, we we had a proven concept when our brick and mortar came along. Yeah. Even though we had tried little parts of brick and mortar before, we mm -hmm. were like partnering with other companies and had little small Sharing space, space. Mm -hmm. and things okay. like that. But when we got out on our actual own, um, I think that that comes with it comes with experience. Because even with the experience we had, we did not know the uh, how Southern Girl would take off right. in that moment, you know. Mm -hmm. And it just comes with if you got the money, you know. If you got, if the, you money, got the money, you just say whatever happens. Exactly, right. and you get to throw in there to keep it going until it it really picks up. Then you can go for it. But I know that a lot of us do not come with a rich uncle who can <laughs> say, here's $250,000 to go and start your business and someone there to catch you when you fall. And we didn't have that experience, but, you know, we just kind of had to work at it until it was it was really blessings. It was a lot of blessings. Blessings on blessings, blessings on blessings. <laughs> because I know that. <laughs> I, I still don't know to this day how we've gotten this far. I mean, I know. Right. That it was, I know it was God. And yeah. I know it was just us being faithful. And, but it, still it's kind of like how did that happen well 10 years so many businesses don't make like you were saying yeah. so many businesses don't make it past three and five because you do have those ups and downs those mm -hmm. ebbs and flows what's the formula that you guys put together to get through the low the low periods the low times i mean how i mean i know we talked about god mm -hmm. and prayer and blessings yeah. and i'm with all of that yeah um but did you i mean did you like sit down with each other and go okay let's re-strategize let's I, pivot let you know i think one of the main things is um We've been um, fortunate enough to have each other. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, you know, they we we talk about this so much. Like a lot of people talk down on partnerships and things like that because lots of people have had horrible experiences. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is a part of the 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 puzzle that has helped our business to be as successful as it has been. Um, we can bounce things off of each other. Yeah. We gonna fuss and cuss and, you know, do all of that with each other as well. <laughs> In public. Um, but, you know, being able to say, okay, this isn't working or, oh my gosh, we just need to cry for a minute or, you know, whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. We had that. Yeah. So, um... When people coming for you on Twitter and Facebook and Yelp <laughs> and crap and, 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 you're, and you don't have anyone to go to yeah. because you're just having your inner business struggles, like, this is a partnership is like a marriage, you know? And you don't tell everybody what's going on in your mm -hmm. marriage, right. right? So, a lot of things we couldn't go and tell people we just had to work through them ourselves. Mm -hmm. And because we had each other, we were able to get on the phone with each other or meet up and cry and yell and scream and do what we need to do and then say, okay, let's motivate each other to get back on track. And yeah. when you're in a business partnership, if one person is not feeling it right now, good thing is one person is. And so we kind of like in those ups and down moments and we're not both like down at the same time right. or mm -hmm. and we can just help each other okay you have your little moment i'm gonna have my little moment and then we'll get back at it yeah so i mean it really is amazing because you don't hear a lot of people being advocates for partnerships like you don't, you don't. like we've seen you know we saw the whole social network film where people were paying off millions of dollars yeah. because they were trying to break it down yeah and forget about the partnerships so when the partnership was going well and you got the phone call for cupcake wars what did that feel like <laughs> you know cupcake wars was very new when we first got our phone call so it wasn't this big hit that we were the now. first episode we were the first episode air. wow <laughs> Cupcake yeah. Wars. so we were like oh cool food network that was very exciting but we didn't know about this show and so our first time going on was like 
it was crazy because we didn't even know really what to expect. We didn't know what we were supposed to be doing, what to expect, and it showed because we were like out <laughs> the second little round. They were like, okay, peace out, Southern girls. But we were just happy to be on television. Of course. You know, we were just like, okay, this is going to help our business. But that was the first of three times that we were on the show. Well, it's a, I will say something. It's something that you were doing right for them to ask you to come back. Yeah. And, and third time was the charm. It yeah. was. And how did you see? Because, you know, we... Everyone in business, everyone in television, you're always trying to get that national exposure because yeah. you think it's going to change things overnight. Did Doesn't you get that type of result yes. from being on Cupcake It, it don't change things overnight, but it does draw attention and it keeps building on it makes the following. next thing to the next thing. Yeah. And at the first, when we first were on Cupcake Wars, we didn't have a brick and mortar. So we didn't get to see those like everyday foot traffic as if we would have done it like the third time when we actually were in our bakery. So, yeah, so then you see the foot traffic and yes. that kind of thing. What type of preparation did you have to do for it? Because, you know, you hear about a lot of businesses mm-hmm. and it's like people with the Oprah effect. Yeah. I didn't have enough stuff for the orders that came in. Because that, that, be, yeah, that could be. Oprah and Food Yeah, that could be like. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the Oprah effect. However, you know, you know what? we do still, have Still something. to this day, we still have people coming in. And we do have that. something that could kind of compare, not on the same level as mm-hmm. Oprah, but <laughs> to compare with that. We did a Groupon. Oh God! Yeah. When Groupon oh, was fairly new, <laughs> okay, you know, and oh, and that thing hit. We sold like fifteen hundred Groupons. Oh my gosh! Um, yeah. The day that we went live on there, we sold fifteen hundred. Mind you, we were in this shared space, um, and during and at that time, we were in the middle of getting a makeover with a show on HGTV. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And so it was done, and and the people that we were partnering, excuse me, partnering with in the in the store decided. They didn't like the fact that our name was bigger than theirs outside, and they asked us to leave. Oh, you can politely give us our keys back. Thank you. Right, and we were like, okay, mind you, we had just sold 1,500 Groupons with the address of where we were um, on where to come and get their stuff. Right. So (laughs) this is one of the things that Katara is talking about, how you can't tell everybody the story. Like, there was Mm -hmm. no one we could tell Mm -hmm. We can't go on, do a Facebook Live and say, <laughs> yeah, these people up. kicked us out. Okay, this is what's going on, okay? <laughs> Don't be mad at us, but if you go back to Yelp 2010, you're going to see these people hated our guts. It was horrible. It was, it was oh bad. Our Yelp was so bad because it we looked crazy. We did. And I was actually looking at an email that I sent to the people over at Food Network, and I'm like, we're going to come and we're going to take this show, but... Believe, please believe that it's just a really been a really hard week for us because all that was happening at the same oh time. Oh my gosh! Cause mm-hmm. I have read case studies about businesses being shut down mm-hmm. by the amount of traffic they get from Groupons mm-hmm. and that type of thing. Oh, yeah. Groupon it's, is real. real. I don't think we we haven't done it since then, just because no. of the experience. And it probably wasn't by Groupon's fault. It was more of just our situation. At yeah, the time. circumstances. Yeah, yeah but it left a bad taste in our mouth. We're like, you know what? We're gonna stay like, away no. from this Groupon. Well, <laughs> to everybody out there, if, just in case you haven't gone back and given them a chance, this was what two thousand ten. Come on, y'all. Come on. We, had a new, we got two new presidents <laughs> since then. Two new presidents. Seven years later, come give on, y'all, a give us a chance. Your credit score clears up in seven years. Come on, right, give them a chance. <laughs> so, so we've done Cupcake Wars. We've yeah. gotten that success. We have brick and mortar. Yeah. I read an article about you two being on Dr. Oz, which I want to applaud you because <laughs> sugar addiction, come on, y'all. It's real. Sugar Man, addiction Jesus. is real. It is very real. And how nervous were you about going on the show talking about sugar addiction while you owned a bakery? <laughs> we thought so about we that. We thought about that in we the did. beginning. We had a conversation. Mm-hmm. We were like, whoa, like, this is, like, we're basically telling people don't, don't come eat. eat our dessert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we said, but you know what? Ain't nobody going to listen. No. <laughs> All them diabetics that come in there and talking about I'm diabetic. You yeah, have to lose a leg, but you know, give me that red gun. Okay. Cake. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. And I mean, and we're not laughing about that. No, yeah, no, no, no. We're not Diabetes, laughing about it. It's very Diabetes serious. is very serious. And if you have it, you need to take care of that. Yes. And be easy on that red velvet. Be mm-hmm. easy but, um, on that red velvet. Yeah. But so we, we did discuss that. And, and what we realized was that 
this is something that's serious. Mm -hmm. Like we just said, like we really need to go and see like, okay, are there some alternatives? What can we do? And what they did was they made us go get physicals. Yeah. Ah. Um, but they didn't give us results. They actually read Dr. Oz read the results of our physicals on mm-hmm. the show. Yeah. So and it scared the crap out of me mm-hmm. because my cholesterol was crazy. Was it? And I I think she was you were pretty cool. Yeah. I th- I think the thing is and what we really wanted to do was make sure that people knew that you can do this but in moderation mm-hmm. and because we work in the business every day you're going they're hungry you're there in the evening and you're I'm starving and what do you do you grab a cookie you grab a slice of cake and so we were that's eating desserts normal. like you know that's we were an uh, abnormal you know <laughs> a consum- consumption of cake <laughs> and pie yeah. <laughs> you know and it's in the beginning of our business so we're trying different recipes so we're tasting and tasting again and like oh that was good let me have a little bite and so I just got out of control but we thought we would go on there and just show people that you know like she said we can learn better ways to incorporate healthier alternatives not necessarily get rid of this but add this right yeah so how is it going for both of you without the sugar or reducing the sugar how's that going you know i have a a a relationship with sugar (laughs) where you know i'm we we together sometimes we together sometimes we not together they be breaking up we be breaking up and and, you know we to get we not together right now you're not okay all right we've been broken up are you texting though you know how you break up you text look i have to go the thing is we work together right (laughs) So I have to go She'd be see doing him. Drive by. And it be talk, the cookies talk to me and everything, but it's just one of them things where you have to just have willpower over it. And, and say, awareness, right? Yeah, it's like, okay, not today. Not today. Mm-hmm. Well, for me, and I am proud to tell my story, right after that show, um, a three-month period, I went completely mm-hmm. without sugar. Right. For three Three months. months. That's and amazing. That is, I lost 30 pounds. Oh my gosh. Mom talk. Yes. That's great. Yes. yes, it was great. It was great. Um, so, like she mentioned before, when it comes to desserts, a lot of stuff is very selfish. Mm-hmm. So, because of me saying I'm not doing this, but I love dessert, right. I had to come up with some stuff that I could actually eat. Mm-hmm. So it was a, a, a great thing in the process. You know, we were able to learn some really, really helpful tricks and learn some new uh, ways to do desserts and mm-hmm. all that kind of jazz. So it was it was great. That's am- I mean, it's honestly, I said, I was like, wait a minute. I mean, branding rules will tell you don't go on. <laughs> right, right, right. Go yeah, on we, the show. We, we switched that little thing going around. And people are like, oh, I, you know, people are like, I saw you on Dr. Oz. <laughs> Your sugar high. Your mind is too. And then like, how, you how you doing though? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, because it's also a very personal thing. Yes, and like you is. said, you don't always tell everybody your business. You, certain, you can't tell everybody your business. Yeah. But I'm sure you helped somebody yes. with that. That was our goal. Yes. Hopefully we did. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what is n- new with Southern Girl Desserts now? New products? New Like what's going okay. on now? <laughs> well, we actually have some um, cooking, some baking series oh. that are going to be coming out. We did a, uh, a, a, okay, if you all watch Cooking Panda, uh, they do all these different recipes and you can show you how to do them really quickly. And it had this recipe, it was a sweet potato pie, but it had Parmesan cheese inside. Oh my gosh. And exactly. It, oh, people, you see that the reaction? Inter- the internet went crazy. <laughs> The internet went crazy. People started tagging us and saying, I know you guys don't, you know, approve of this. And maybe after a week after it went crazy, we got a phone call from an email from Cooking Panda. And they said, do you all mind coming in and showing us how you do sweet potato pie? And so we came in, we did it, and it's now had over 2 million views. Oh, my gosh. Because people are like, you know, you know, and it's funny because our my mother specifically was on that fussing. <laughs> Her mother. They're my babies. Why are y'all talking? <laughs> I digress, but we, but they, they, they liked it so much that we're going to be introducing a new series on Cooking Panda that will release uh, release in April. Okay, and we'll be showing different Southern recipes. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. It'll and be our got, own little show. And you guys have a new line that you're working on, or something. We're on working it. on some healthier desserts. From what you learned with the sugar yeah, addiction, absolutely. Now when those roll out, you give me a call because I'm. Like, <laughs> 
I'm you know, because you get a that. lot of people coming in yeah. wanting gluten free and um, you know sugar free and all of these. I different think there's things. a I think there's a big shift um, mm-hmm. with people wanting to become more health conscious, especially mm-hmm. people of color. Yes, yeah. um, and so you know you don't have a lot of options. And the thing is, when it comes to us, we want stuff. That's good. I don't care how healthy it's supposed to right. be or whatever yeah, it's supposed to be. To be it has to be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that's the thing that we feel really confident that we have hit with this. Um, and it's going to be great. I think people are going to really take to it. Um, and it's it's a different extreme. But some people are looking for that, that other extreme. Ex- yeah. Especially in L.A. When I moved yeah. to L.A., mm-hmm. I was just like... I can't get no regular hamburger. Right. I can't, you know what I mean? Like that. I mean, those kind yeah. of things that you were used to. Especially here. You want grass fed? Right. <laughs> like, I, I can't get no regular. But you're right. Like, yeah. we are, especially as a culture, mm-hmm. uh-huh. It can be. I don't. It does not have to be healthy, but it has to be it good to be because good. it's not. We're not going. We're not going to. Not at all. I mean, I, I got to LA and became bougie with my food. Like, you know, I only eat grass fed beef. <laughs> <laughs> and I go back home to Athens, and I'm like, "What?" Everybody right? Your mama like, right. "You better you know, this you chili, you girl." Exactly. <laughs> Let me tell you, I, mama's I, when right. I first moved to LA, I became a vegetarian, and um, too much. Yes, I went home. <laughs> my grandmother was still alive at that point, and I never forget <laughs> we were at my grandmother's house, and my dad was like, "Mama, she doesn't eat meat." Well. Eat the chicken. Like, <laughs> chicken lady. <laughs> she ain't trying to she hear it. She ain't trying to hear it. She ain't trying to hear it. So we do have a newlywed here in the house. Yes. yes. Thank you, Jesus. It's not me. <laughs> it's me. It's me. It's me. <laughs> How are you balancing work, marriage? Because, I mean, balance mm-hmm. is, I mean, you know, even if you're not, like, figuring mm-hmm. out that balance, being entrepreneurs, you got to worry about safe self-care, taking care of yourself, and it's all about balance. Yeah. How are you balancing the business, the demands of it, the husband? It, it I'm still learning, but I, I believe, and we both have learned balance in the last five years, which is when we opened our storefront. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's one of those things where Shanice knows, I'll be like, uh-uh, I can't. I need I need to do this or I got to do that because like, I am trying to balance a, a lot and having a husband is very demanding right and we're trying to have kids too so when that comes in the, in the picture you know some things are gonna have to like you know I'll have to figure that out yeah. all over again but it's it was hard for me at first because I felt obligated to be over here and I felt obligated to be over here and when I was here I felt guilty for not being here and vice versa um, but you know, I feel like I'm. I have a groove now, and she she's she learned my groove as well. So now we know kind of how each other we work in those situations, and sometimes it just don't work out. And just like, okay, well, you know, you got to do this, right? You know, so but try not to do it as often. Try not to neglect business and mm-hmm. try not to neglect relationship because I need both. Right. Well, Shanice, you had to make an adjustment too because mm-hmm. you said before your partnership is like a marriage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now yeah. your partner has another partner. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure some she adjustments. Had, she was <laughs> cheating on me. And so, um, you know. She had to learn how it, to deal it, with it. It got, it got <laughs> bad, you know, for a minute mm-hmm. because I'm like, well, shoot. Well, he don't understand. You know what I mean? So, you, and, and it's true. Like, you do have to figure it out. And I think she's, like she was saying, she's figured out her balance in the last five years. I'm mm-hmm. kind of figuring mine out in the last two years. Okay. And so, it's really one of those things where you have to decide really what the priority is for mm-hmm. you. And for she and I, the priority isn't always the same thing. And... It just is what it is. Right. At the end of the day, there's two of us. There's one business. Mm-hmm. And we will make a decision and pray that the doors are still open the next day. And it's just that simple. Right. You right. know, sometimes kind of being you just okay, got to okay be like, with whatever. It. You yeah. know, because it'll, it'll be times you'll be like, <laughs> you know, just blank stare. Seriously. Right. You know, and, I, you know, and it's one of those things is like, you don't understand. You, 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 you just don't understand. Yeah. You know? And we had to learn. But like, I may not understand it, but I got to respect it. Mm-hmm. Or I have to just be okay with it. You know what I yeah. mean? So it, it it was a very sensitive, you know, area for us at a while, for a while. Mm-hmm. But we knew we weren't going anywhere and we were going to have to just make it work. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, has, yeah. it ebbs and flows and it has right. to have exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, but that's, the, that's one of the biggest things about having that partnership. 
um, is like she's I think the word she just hit on is the biggest one. It's just respect. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I respect her marriage. I respect, you know, what they have going on. But at the same time, you know, I, I need to make sure that I'm good, too, because my man be looking at me like... <laughs> Yeah, you know? they all be looking like so right <laughs> <laughs> so you really I think what I think one of the biggest issues with business owners is that you always have someone in your ear a, a mentor or someone who's done it before or mm -hmm. whatever and you always respect that person or those individuals <clears throat> opinions and you want to take everything they say at face value but what you have to realize is that your situation it's is different, different. Yeah. <laughs> and so when you hear people saying well you gotta be there and you can't you know what do you mean having a baby you ain't got time for babies <laughs> and you know it's like wait a minute you still have to live yeah yeah you still have to live yeah. so you just have to figure it out and how it works best for you yeah I really like I hate to even wrap up but because yeah, I've had like I know I, that's what I'm saying I'm, I'm having okay. the best time but before we <laughs> end give our audience three things that they can do after they stop watch after you stop watching this video and then liking <laughs> it and then tell somebody else to watch it after you do and those it. right after you do those those things give our audience three things they can do to start their business my 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 advice would be start now there is no reason to wait until you collect you know a hundred thousand dollars in crowdfunding that may happen awesome but if it doesn't don't let that determine when you start your business you can start for t as easy as 25 bucks going to get your dba which is doing business as um you know or you can start and get your business license and just get things rolling because when the opportunity comes around you want to be prepared to yeah. go and uh, another thing is what we did not do and not necessarily telling other people to do this because we just kind of hit the road yeah running a little bit but making sure you have a business plan or a growth plan to know what direction you want your business to go into mm -hmm. we played a lot of it off of gut we still do to this day but that may not be how <laughs> it will work for you <laughs> like i said we had all kind of angels and jesus <laughs> and saint paul Call on and <laughs> all of them it's mary <laughs> everybody joseph Everybody was on our side, and it, and and this is we know for sure that we are living in the purpose and plan for our lives. So it had to work out, right? But just be prepared. Go into it with some some knowledge of what you're doing, mm -hmm. and and just you know just go. You know um, when somebody calls you and asks you, can you say yes and, and figure it figure out. It out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Google is an amazing thing. Yes, mm -hmm. And so uh, a lot of people are very Google smart these days, and you can be too. Right. So <laughs> you too can Google. You too can Google. <laughs> Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you. Tara. Let everybody know where they can find you too. They can find the business, where they can order, where you can buy a bunch of t cupcakes. You can send me some. I mean, let's just <laughs> let everybody know exactly where they can find you. Okay, so on our Twitter, we are Dessert Divas. And on our Facebook and our Instagram, we're a Southern Girl Desserts. And you can find all of our desserts and everything. And we have a brick and mortar at the Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Mall. That's on MLK and Crenshaw. We're open seven days a week. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and you can come in and just find all sorts of amazing desserts that your grandmother and mama, they don't feel like baking. Because we know all y'all mama and them can everybody cook. Bake. Everybody bake. <laughs> Everybody mama got the best everything. <laughs> but just in case they don't feel she like don't it. live here. <laughs> and y'all don't they don't feel like doing it, y'all come and see us. Or you know what? Buy some and then take them to your grandmother. Absolutely. You know, and then ask her what yeah. she thinks. That's what we're competing against your grandma. Yes. yes. That's, That's what, what you can, can do too. Can yeah. they order online and have them shipped to you? Or do you well, right now we're not doing any nationwide shipping, but if you go to E twenty four or Grubhub or any places like that, online delivery services, they can have them delivered that way. You can get, you don't even have to leave in the house. Yeah. You can have them delivered to house. you. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Thank you again both so Thank much you for having 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 so we really much enjoyed it. Fun. Southern girls desserts. Get them. Share them. <laughs> Kate, like if you having birthdays, like whatever you gotta do. Mm -hmm. And it's all I'm gonna say in moderation for all you sugar addicts out yes. there. <laughs> yes. You're but not alone. You're not alone. But thank you so much for being here. I'm Tara Johnson. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at TJ Wagon Her Tail. And we will be back, and she and I will be back next week for another episode of Success is the New Black. Bye. Bye bye.
executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Christie, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us. Info at BlackHollywoodLive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio, Instagram at KingXO Bay. Thanks for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the host owner and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.